Okay, today I wanna to share with you a really amazing power grade within DaVinci Resolve that may totally transform the way you color grade and can take you from footage like this to footage like this. So lots of possibilities, let's check it out. So I'm almost hesitant to share this because this has really been my secret weapon within DaVinci Resolve over the last year. And what it's called is CinePrint 16. Now this is a power grade developed by a cinematographer and colorist named Tom Bowles. And he developed this, so this is not my tool and I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I just wanna share what this can do for your color grading. Okay, so to start off, I just wanna show you this footage. This is the Rec. 709, so this is essentially what we are monitoring on the day. All we're doing is taking it from RE Wide Gamut Log C into Rec. 709. So this is our initial footage, great. Not that inspiring, but looks good. Okay, so now we have our log footage and I'm gonna go into the gallery and go ahead and apply our power grade. Again, it's called CinePrint 16. And right away you can see there's a lot going on. So don't be overwhelmed. I know it's a big node tree, but let's look at it. So this power grade is essentially broken into three or four different sections. So the first section is what I would call the footage adjustment or log adjustment section. So what we're doing here is our color space transform, bringing everything into uh, RE wide gamut log C, which it already is in this case. And then we're doing basic adjustments to the log footage to get everything balanced nicely. So that would essentially be white balance and exposure adjustments just to get everything uh, looking nice to start working with. The next section we'll talk about is at the very bottom here, and this is our output section. So there is essentially two options within CinePrint 16. One is a Cineon output, and then one is a print film LUT output. And within the print film, you either can do Kodak 2383 at a variety of white points, or you can also do a Fuji 3513. And then we have kind of our look adjustments. So this is where you can get creative, do creative primaries, saturation, exposure, contrast adjustments. And then there also are some nodes that Tom has put in here that allow you to quickly kind of change the look. And then lastly, here in the middle, there is space for you to do uh, all sorts of other adjustments like power windows, keying, et cetera. So again, here from the Rec. 709, let me just show you the first look that I developed and then I'll walk you through how we got there. So this is the Cineon look and Cineon is essentially the flat uh, film scan output before a print film LUT. And as you can see, it has a really interesting color palette and tone curve. It's definitely a flatter look and the colors are a little more pastel. So again, walking through our workflow, uh, our color space transform is not doing anything, taking us from uh, RE log C to RE log C. We could essentially shut that off, nothing would change. But it's good to keep in there in case you're working with different uh, camera systems. And then we're doing a little bit of a exposure bump. It already applies a bit of an exposure bump to start with. And then I pushed it a little more from there. And then there's also a slight white balance shift happening. So that's just getting us to a better starting point to go ahead and creatively grade on top of. Jumping to the bottom, you see that we have the Cineon output enabled and the print film output turned off. If I go ahead and switch those, you can see the difference. And then within this uh, third to bottom row, I have the neon suppression matrix turned on and this lab saturation turned on. And since we're going for a more saturated look here, I have enabled those. I could also play around with some of these nodes if I want, you know, it's fun to just toggle them on and off, maybe toggle both at the same time. But for this, I'll go ahead and leave them off. I've also enabled this highlight soft node, which you can see is just rolling off the highlights nicely. I pretty much have that on all the time. And then I just have two power windows. One is kind of pulling the edge of the car down and drawing our attention to the middle. And then one is just bumping his face a tiny bit. And then lastly, we have this halation node on. And if you go ahead and open the compound node, you can see, again, there's a lot going on here, but you really only have to understand a few things to get the look you want. So that's it. You can even add a film border, fun things like that. You could add dust, you could add gate weave, which will give it a little bit of shake. Um, there's a lot that you can accomplish within this power grade very, very quickly. 
This grade took me less than five minutes to go from log or rec 709 into this look. So again, really powerful tool to quickly develop different looks. And speaking of that, let's go ahead and show you the next look. So the next look is a Kodak 2383 print film look. So we have a very, very similar thing happening here with a few slight adjustments. So the big one is we've turned off the Cineon output and we've turned on the print film output with the 2383 D60 node on. This has a very different tone curve and saturation profile than Cineon. So it's just up to you and your preference, but this to me is more of just kind of that classic film look. So I've also enabled the vintage node here, which uh, mutes some of the colors a little bit. And I think if you're going for maybe a grittier look, that kind of works nicely. And he recommends using that in combination with this neon suppression matrix. So those two together are really changing the saturation profile quite a bit. I've also changed the halation from a red colored halation to just white halation. And then I've also enabled this endpoint node here at the end, and it's just kind of creating a little bit more contrast right at the end, which sometimes helps the image pop just a little bit more. So again, only maybe four or five nodes different, and you can see that it's a really, really different look. Both have their strengths, but that's the beauty of this power grade. Again, it's just so fast, and that's really, really important. Okay, the last look I wanna show you is again, based on the same power grade with a few differences, and this is a bleach bypass look. So as you can see, I have the 2383 print film look on, essentially the same exact uh, overall node structure as our previous 2383 grade. And then the only difference is I added these two nodes with a layer mixer. So you may be familiar with this technique, but if not, essentially what we're doing is creating a layer node with a layer mixer set to soft light. And then in our top node, we've gone into the RGB mixer and enabled monochrome. So that's creating a black and white image layered on top of a color image below it. And then those two outputs are fed into the layer mixer where they're combined using the soft light blending mode. So within our monochrome mode, we can go ahead and change our green output, our red output and our blue output, and that'll change the luminance values of each of those channels and give you a different look. So it's a pretty cool way to dial in um, kind of a unique look. And then I've also dropped our key output to 0.5 because when you have it all the way up at one, it's a little intense, you lose out on most of the saturation. So I just kind of walked that down and thought it felt good right at 0.5. If I take that back to zero, you can see this is essentially the same grade that we were at before. Uh, and then back to 0.5, we're just introducing bit more of that uh, bleach bypass look. So there you go, these are our four looks, our Rec. 709, our Cineon, our 2383, and our bleach bypass. So I was able to create each of these looks in under five minutes. I mean, once you apply the grade and dial in your color space transform, it's smooth sailing from there and it really gives you a lot of flexibility to be as creative and unique with the look as you want. There's a lot we did not even dive into with this power grade. So I would encourage you to go to Tom's website. He has a ton of examples and a lot more information about the power grade. And if you like what you see, buy it. I think it'll revolutionize your color grading workflow. And again, I hope you enjoy it. This is my secret weapon of DaVinci Resolve, and I would encourage you to try it for yourself and see what you think. So thanks to Tom, he's doing amazing work, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.